Hi everyone and welcome to the channel and welcome to another episode of Learning FreeCAD for Beginners, teaching fundamentals of FreeCAD whilst we learn workflows. Today we're going to be looking at the thickness tool. We're going to start with how to use the thickness tool and how to hollow out such an object as this with just a few clicks of the mouse button. We're going to be understanding how to add variable thickness such as the base of this box and a little trick that I'm going to show you of how to achieve that. We're then going to look at more complex shapes and how the hollowing works with such a shape like this. We're then going to turn to a little project where we're going to use what we learnt to create a very simple lid and box with tolerances to allow the lid to fit on here snugly and we can see the gap we got in there. This will be done with one sketch only and I'm going to show you a trick with shape binders and thicknesses to achieve the end goal. So I hope you're enjoying this channel and let's have a look at this workflow. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to span the channel. For this demonstration, I'm in the part design. I'm going to create a new body and a new sketch. We're going to go along the XY plane and hit OK. So we're looking down on the object. We're just going to sketch a simple rectangle in here to show the thickness features. I'm not going to bother about constraints, just going to close it. And I'm going to add some height to this by using the pad. So use the pad on that sketch and set it to 20 millimeters. Now the thickness tool lives on the toolbar just here. Thickness, make a fixed solid. And also it's up on part design, apply dress up and add thickness. What the thickness actually does, if we use the top face here of the pad and apply that thickness, our solid is hollowed out, giving it the same width walls all the way around. We look at the thickness, it's set to one millimeter at the moment and this can change, let's say five millimeters. You notice that this has gone outwards, so the thickness has gone this way and it has curved edges. We can change that with the join type. So you can see all those curved edges all the way around there. Set the join type to intersection and then we get straight edges all the way around. Now if you want it inwards, we just check the make thickness inwards. That sends it inwards like so. We don't have the option for an arc that goes inwards. It's the same as basically an intersection. One thing to note is that all these walls, including the bottom face here, will be the same thickness. If I OK that and section view through the material by coming up to view, coming down to clipping plane, and we're going to clip it along this plane here. So I want to section it through the center. And this is going to be going this way. So this will be the X plane. So clipping a plane X, we can see that's clipped in there. And you can see that thickness of that wall is the same size. This can cause problems. So if I bring back the clipping plane and hit close, let's have a look at what we might want to do if the thickness is say two millimeters. So we've got the two millimeters wall, but we have a two millimeter wall here. What I'm also gonna do is remove one of these faces as well. So I'm gonna add face again and click on this face. Nothing looks like it's happened, but let's just toggle the make thickness inwards on and off. So it refreshes and you can see that face has been removed. And you can see the thickness of these walls are the same. So if we wanted a thicker bottom, what do we do? Well, it's quite simple. Because this is a planar shape, we can take that bottom face and just pad it. We don't need a sketch. If we pad that, you can see we can make the thickness that we need. So I'm gonna add, say two millimeter thickness onto the base and hit OK. Therefore, we have a thicker base and thinner sides. 
if we're placing any features upon here, we may not want these two faces here. We might want to merge them into one. And we can easily do that by clicking on the pad, coming down to the refine and setting this to true. What this does, it removes that face that is planner with this section and it's seen as an unneeded face. So it's just merged into one face there. Just remember that if we've got this here, if we turn that back on, or we'll set it to false, then our underlining edges and naming of the edges will change. This is not a problem with FreeCAD. This is not a topological naming issue. With such packages like Fusion 360, you'll find that if you have anything added to, say, referencing one of these edges, this one here, and create a feature that reference that edge, when that edge disappears, the feature will be highlighted in yellow. And that shows that the underlining geometry or face has disappeared and is no longer available. And you have to go back through the tree to re-add that. Now, what happens if we add the thickness to a more complex shape? So let's look at some arc shapes to show you the same kind of thing happens. So create a body, create a sketch, we're going to go along this time the XZ plane. OK, that. And I'm going to create a non constrained sketch of, say, an arc. We're going to bother about the constraints and we'll create a straight line across those. Now we'll look at this. If we pad it, selecting the sketch and pad it by, say, 30 millimeters, we get the shape. And we can do the same. We can select the top and use the thickness and creates a thickness in here. You can see the thickness has gone outwards and we can make the thickness inwards. Now, one thing to note is that the trick of using say this bottom face and padding it is going to still work. So you can see that's been padded straight upwards there. And we set that to something like two millimeters. But we're gonna get these tops here. So we've got these here. So we have to deal with those. So that's okay that. So we've got this face here, which we need to either do a cut or remove somehow. We could select that face and do a pocket and go through all, and that will quickly remove that. And the same for the other side. So let's cancel that and select both of them. Control selecting both the faces. And doing a pocket through all, and that takes that away. That's okay that. As you can see, we've got multiple faces. We can refine that if we want. So that's true. It removes those. But notice the thickness. We have a variation of thickness here compared to here. Let's do the section view. Go to view, clip and plane, and we'll look along the Y, and we can see what's happened inside. So you can see the variation of thickness in there. And let's go along the X as well. Personally, if I was making this shape and I wanted to hollow out, I would use some other approach by using multiple geometry. For instance, I would sketch coming up on these two and then create this shape and then add the sides onto it. Therefore, I've got total control over the edge thickness. Let's close that clip and plane and remove the objects within and keep in the sketch. I'm going to pad this by 20 mil. And I'm going to do something different now. So I'm going to create a sketch upon here. So new sketch and we'll create a sketch. That's it. Somewhere like this. Let's hit close and we'll pocket this about two millimeters. So we have this shape. Now we can't add a thickness to this face. So I click on that face and add a thickness it's going to fail. So you can see it's got a failure there because the thickness is applied to all the faces within here. So it makes all these faces thick. 
what you can do if I cancel that is add a sketch on here create a new sketch and we'll create a sketch within like so and this demonstrates what happens that's pad this slightly by 0.1 millimeters so we've created a small pad if I select the top face and create a thickness you see the thickness has gone outwards so we're actually increasing the thickness of the model now until it goes into error now if you look because we've got the arc selected for the join type when these arcs start crossing over it will go into error like so let's just take that off and place this intersection as you can see it's not working but if we go make thickness inwards we can see what's happening inside and set it to one millimeters so we look inside what's happened is that the material has been removed and it's shelling out the object from inside when we go over to the cross section view clipping plane and use our X and Y we can see what's happening inside here so you're getting this removal of material and leaving all the walls the same thickness so one of the things that I use thickness for is to create quick enclosures now the technique I'm going to show is using shape binder as well and I'm going to just use one single sketch to create both the main box and the lid and the lid is going to have tolerance as well so we're going to create a body and we're going to create a sketch along the XY plane and OK that. Now I'm going to come in and create a rectangle. I'm going to use the curvature of the rounded rectangle just for a bit more detail. So we've got that one there. I'm not going to worry about constraints just going to move quickly through this so I've got the rectangle I've selected the sketch I can pad this now and we'll pad this by 20 mil we add the thickness by coming into the top and add in the thickness and we send the thickness inwards and I'm going to create the sides at two millimeters but I want a thicker base as well let's just okay that come round, select the base and set the thickness of the base by using a pad and we're going to pad that by two mil so now we've got a four millimeter thickness on the base and a two millimeter thickness on the walls so I've created basically the box the bottom of the box to create the top I'm going to bring in a shape binder for that I need something to attach it to now if we go back to the original pad, this one here, and press the space bar, we see the top of this box. And this is what I'm going to use, the shape binder. And this is how I'm going to add tolerance as well. So before I add the binder, let's create a new body. If we look at this body, you can see it's bold and it's active. And that's what we want. Let's expand our first body so we can get to the top pad. So this one here and we select just the top face of that pad now when we add the subshape binder what will happen is it will be placed inside this body but it will be linked to the face of this pad so go out to part design and create a subshape binder you see the binder is in the second body now with binders you normally use them for reference but you can pad them as well so this is perfect for making our lid that's hide the original body and click on the subject binder I'm going to actually bring it around to the bottom and pad downwards so we're going to hit pad this will pad upwards let's hit reverse and it will send it downwards we'll go a length of 10 millimeters and OK that's come in select the bottom remember our body so this one here sits on the bottom here 
So I can come into that pad, let's hide the bottom, and select the bottom of our lid and use a thickness. This time I'm going to send it outwards. So the last thickness we went inwards, the next thickness we're going outwards. And I'm going to set the thickness to two millimeters outwards, like so. And maybe I want a thicker top, but we'll go for that in a moment. That's okay that. So at the moment what we've got is the original body, this one here that's show that pad and it sits inside that lid but we don't have any tolerances yet so we tried to 3d print this this one actually fit on top because we got a tight tolerance here unless we force it on there so how do we solve that well the subshape binder has an offset let's find that binder this one here and come down to the data tab come right down to the bottom and you'll see the offset and set this offset to one, so one millimeter, and it will push it outwards, and you can see we've got gapping in here now. So you can see it all in there, and the gapping is within. So we can play with this, let's say 0.5 or 0.25, and that gives us our tolerance. So we've made a quick and simple box using thickness going inwards and a thickness going outwards and using the subshape binder to give us some tolerance. So that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful and I hope to see you again soon. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing and I'll see you again soon.